Celebrating our farmers and building their capacity to withstand the impact of climate-related hazards, the Government of Jamaica Adaptation Fund program has been improving infrastructure on some farms. Keep watching for the details. Hi there. Thanks for making it. Jamaica Magazine, I'm Adrian Atkinson. If you stick around, you get to hear what our youth leaders have to say about President Barack Obama's recent visit to the island. Trust me, that and so much more is in store. Stay with us. I say be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Parents, keep your children safe and protected. Stay alert and be aware of where your children are at all times. Submit the latest photo of your child to his or her school. Know what's happening with your child. Listen to them when they say they don't feel comfortable going to a certain place or being around certain persons. Act quickly when your child tells you he or she has been touched inappropriately or approached with unwanted requests. Be the change. Help us protect our children. For more information, call 1-888-776-8328 or 1-876-878-2882. Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Thursday, April 16. The Science and the Technology Ministry is preparing to issue licenses to two tertiary institutions to carry out scientific research on marijuana under the new ganja reform law. The Dangerous Drugs Amendment Act 2015 took effect yesterday. And during his sectoral presentation on the same day, Portfolio Minister Philip Powell announced that licenses would be issued to the University of Technology and the University of the West Indies. Some institutions were already allowed to use marijuana for research, but had to access the plant under the auspices of the police. Now they will be allowed to cultivate the crop for scientific research, particularly its medicinal properties, but under strict regulations. It's not a free-for-all. Uh, it is not to promote the smoking of ganja. It is to recognize that this product has tremendous value in it. And as we move towards enabling the commercialization of medical ganja, the research aspect is, is crucial. To maintain consistency in quality, Minister Powell says a detailed training curriculum has been developed to support farmers. There are many countries now that have done very well in research in ganja. Jamaica wants to re-establish itself as a center of excellence for the research in ganja. This should be the home of research and development in ganja, and that is what we intend to do. He says this direction will take an all-inclusive approach to maximize the opportunities that exist. And even as government looks to develop a legal medicinal and scientific ganja industry, it remains adamant that students are to be dissuaded from using the drug. Education Minister Reverend Ronald Waits also made his contribution to the sectoral debate yesterday and had this message. While I support the decriminalization of small quantities of ganja, I want to tell you that we've had reports already today from some high school principals as to the effect of those students who feel that everything is free now and that they can use ganja in order to help them to do better in their studies. We have to state very clearly from this house that Ganja is not for school children and smoking is not to be permitted in any school. He said this message and others would be stressed through the ministry's ongoing re-socialization programs. These include the school-wide positive behavior intervention and support framework, health and family life education, and the Value of the Pathways program. Still on education, the ministry has established a payment scheme with the University of the West Indies, which will make it significantly easier for students to pay their tuition fees. Minister Thwaites says the scheme is especially geared towards medical students. He has called on other universities to come on board. And I'm calling on the, or reminding that the University of the West Indies is giving time to students and their families to find the money, even to the morning of the examination, even when the students haven't paid and take the examination. Yes, 
and they hold the results until they can pay. And I'm asking the University of Technology to rope in on that. Yes. 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 No more of yes. paying money and then being asked to sit out for a year. That's not good enough. The minister is meanwhile urging students to respect and abide by the terms of these agreements. And the education minister, along with the JTA, has expressed condolences to the family and school community of the three students shot and killed by gunmen in Clarendon last night. At a press briefing this morning, the minister called for a culture of peace. It emphasizes the vulnerability of our children and the resolve of the ministry and everyone here. And there is, there is, there is such a tremendous obligation on behalf of principals and school leaders to instruct their students uh, how to avoid the dangers that society uh, uh, places them in, and also for us to all work towards a culture of peace. The Micah University College's Youth Counseling Research and Development Center will be providing free counseling intervention to children in state care. Micah signed a memorandum of understanding with the Child Development Agency, CDA, recently to facilitate the intervention. The free counseling will also be provided to children who access the CDA's services through its intake desk and other avenues. Meanwhile, CDA officers and their families will receive counseling services at discounted rates. Micah's Youth Counseling Resource Development Center is a counseling laboratory and outreach program that was initiated by the school psychology department. It offers a range of therapeutic services including individual and group therapy using a variety of techniques such as play and sand therapy. And finally, the Ministry of Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change has developed a citizen's charter as part of measures to improve its service delivery. Permanent Secretary Dr. Alwyn Hills says the document represents a covenant between his ministry and all those whom it serves. He says it shows that the ministry is serious about redefining its modes of operation through a revamped business model. This important document represents the ministry's commitment to these processes through standards of service, information, consultation, accessibility, grievance, redress, courtesy, and value for money offered to its stakeholders and to the public in general. The charter may be viewed on the ministry's website. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thank you for watching. Smoking, it's bad for your health. There's nothing cool about this habit. Tobacco smoking is a silent killer that will snare you in a horrific cycle of addiction that robs you of your money and your health. And it's not just you who suffers. Those around you who <coughs> inhale the smoke are also at risk, your friends and loved ones. So stop if you've started or resist before you begin the habit. Stay healthy. In Jamaica, sectors like agriculture and tourism rely heavily on our environment for their production inputs, and climate change is a major threat to that. So through the Government of Jamaica Adaptation Fund program, our farmers are being trained and exposed to climate-smart best practices to strengthen their resilience. We have an update on the progress to date. The Georgia Adaptation Fund program seeks to address the issues which speak to the vulnerability of our communities, um, particularly our farming communities. And this is where the overarching objective of the program, which is to increase the livelihood security of the population in these communities to increase the overall climate resilience of the agricultural sector. We have targeted seven parishes to implement the agricultural component, and these parishes are St. Thomas, St. Mary, St. Anne, Trelawney, Manchester, St. Catherine, and Clarendon. We have so far implemented 99 on-farm small-scale drip irrigation systems across the seven parishes. We have also instituted or implemented 17 rainwater harvesting systems using a variety of roof catchment systems as well as tanks and ponds. Three irrigation and production productivity schemes 
in four parishes to include St. Thomas, St. Catherine, Trelawney and Manchester. Approximately 176 small grants have been approved to our farming communities where these farmers are assisted with production and productivity grants to assist them in the establishment of agricultural enterprises such as onion, Irish potato, sweet pepper among other, other crops. We have also established five demonstration plots, that's a land husbandry demonstration plots in which we have demonstrated or illustrated best practices in terms of land husbandry where farmers are taught the new technology as well as improvement in their existing technology to seek to practice sustainable developments on the land to make sure that their resilience is enhanced in terms of their response or their adaptation to climate change. We seek to build the capacity of both our extension staff as well as our farmers to implement these uh, best practices on the individual holdings. Building the capacity is a very critical component of this, this program, where we, through institutional strengthen, strengthening, we work with our RADA extension officers to provide them with training in terms of best practices as to how they transfer climate smart practices or technologies to their farmers. In pursuit of that, we have just concluded a two weeks workshop, what we call a trainer of trainers in land husbandry best practices. 30 extension farmer extension officers were drawn from across the length and breadth of Jamaica, 13 parishes to be exact. So having been trained, they would now be able to return to their community with enhanced capacity to help their farmers to adapt to climate change, um, employing these, these best practices that they have been taught. So far, over 330 farmers have benefited from the production and productivity components where we have established just about 100 acres of onion and three, 400 rather, 400 acres of Irish potato, a total of 500 acres on this some component, where these farmers were assisted with grant funding for inputs such as seeds, fertilizers, chemicals and such like. We have also established four Climate Smart Farmer Field School where we are training uh, so far since the second year of our program we have trained 400 farmers particularly in, in, in um, climate smart agriculture and the project continues uh, there's much more to accomplish and we are moving forward. Which government organization offers you exceptional customer service? A tax office, police station, hospital, post office, health center, or NIS office? Vote for your favorite public sector organization in the public sector customer service competition. Call toll-free 1-888-991-2752. Visit cabinet.gov.jm and follow the instructions. Or drop your entry form at government agencies islandwide. Votes close April 30, 2015. Let your voice be heard. Building the capacity of young people was the overarching focus of President Obama's meeting with young leaders during his recent visit to the island. At the Town Hall Youth Forum, he announced a 68 million U.S. dollar investment in education, training and employment programs for Latin American and Caribbean youth. 
and launched the Young Leaders of America's initiative. That was enough to motivate the audience and those watching, but he had even more to inspire the youth. I believe we can move past some of the old debates that so often define the region and move forward in a way that benefits your generation with new thinking. An energetic, impatient, dynamic, and diverse generation that you represent, both in the United States and across the hemisphere. More than 100 million people in Latin America and the Caribbean are between the ages of 15 and 24. Most of the region is under 35. And what gives me so much hope about your generation is that you're more interested in the hard work of waging peace than resorting to the quick impulses of conflict. You're more interested in the hard work of building prosperity through entrepreneurship, not cronyism or corruption. You're more eager for progress that comes not by holding down any segment of society, but by holding up the rights of every human being, regardless of what we look like or how we pray or who we love. You care less about the world as it has been and more about the world as it should be and can be. And unlike any other time in our history, the technology at your disposal means that you don't have to wait for the change that you're looking for. You have the freedom to create it in your own powerful and disruptive ways. Many of you already have, whether by starting your own enterprises. And I want you to have every chance, every tool you need to make this world better. And we'll help you to expand your commercial and social ventures. We'll embed you in an American business and incubators. We'll give US participants the chance to continue their collaboration with you. So the idea is, is that you'll get a chance to implement your ideas, but now have linkages that give you access to capital and, and, and research and all the things you need to mobilize and implement the kinds of things that you're doing. And this isn't charity for us. This is an investment in your future because that means it's an investment in our future. A future where climate researchers in the Amazon can collaborate with scientists in Alaska. An idea in Barbados suddenly can be developed in an incubator in, in Boston. Anti-gang activities in Honduras can be connected to similar activities in Houston, Texas. It's a future where any kid from Kingston can choose a path that opens his or her horizons beyond their neighborhood to the wider world. And that impulse, that impulse to make the world better, to push back on those who try to make it worse, that's something that your generation has to hold on to. And, and you have to remember, it's never easy. There are no days off. But if there's one thing that I know from my own life, it's that with hard work and with hope, change is always within our reach. You know, the Jamaican-American poet Claude McKay, who was a central figure of the Harlem Renaissance, once wrote something along those lines. We must strive on to gain the height, although it may not be in sight, as long as we've got young strivers like you. And I hope to see you in Washington as part of this Young Leaders of the Americas initiative. I'm confident that brighter future will always be in sight. After the President's talk and response to questions from the youth, we asked a few young persons what stood out most for them. I particularly like the way he handled the question of China being a powerful force along the global e economy. That the real issue is that China is creating opportunities for people to get jobs, to have a better quality of life. And if China can provide services in a competitive manner, meeting the needs of people, then that's altogether good. One of the things that stood out to me was when he spoke about um, the decriminalization of marijuana. I thought that his answers were realistic, the consequences both positive and negative, and I appreciate that he told us that states such as Washington and Colorado are experimenting in a sense the decriminalization and 
we can look to them to see whether or not it's really a viable solution to help an, an ailing economy. His message was very short, yet very, very impactful. Um, I think he's a very down-to-earth person. This is, a, this is history for all of us here today, even for yourself. Well, session that's not for me really was in terms of how Mr. Obama responded to the immigrant question. I think he did a very good job at answering the question and it also speaks to future relations as relates to how it impacts Jamaica because we know we have a lot of Jamaicans existing in the United States as immigrants and so this was very encouraging in how he responded to that question. You don't know me sit down town the other day there. Oh. All the cooperation them man we buy and sell marina. Yeah. One of them I sell a six pack for for thousand dollar and the next one I sell one for two hundred dollar. So where why? Buy five of them for thousand dollar. Think them can rob me. So Uncle Fancy, it's the same thousand dollar you would spend to get the six. Seriously? Tell them again you're my math brains. Math count. Math count. Sponsored by the Ministry of Education. Up next, an aspiring young farmer shares her dream of becoming an agriculture scientist in goat breeding. Did you know that a goat eats three times more than a cow? Didn't know. Me either. Well, my name is Amanda Forbes and today I'll be sharing some information with you about goat care and management. Now follow me. Well, this is my grandfather's goat pen and this is where I learned, well, some of the things that I learned about for goat care and management and I'll be teaching you more about the goats in this pen. They're very friendly. Well, this pen was created like this and it has lots of holes inside of the caves because goats love rocky area to get exercise in, right? So when they go up inside the pen, it protects them from the rain and they get a lot of exercise because they're actually going up and down on the hillsides. And they actually love this type of environment where they can interact with each other. You can actually tell the age of a goat by its teeth. And especially when it has the first two front teeth pop out, you know that it's one year old. But when it starts to get spaced, you can actually tell the age. But when it has no teeth, you can actually know that it's months old. It's not really a year old, it's very young, despite how big they seem. Only 15 years of age, Amanda already has a wealth of knowledge in the care and management of goats. And in addition to being mentored by her grandfather, she has learned some of this information from her association with the Jamaica 4-H Club. In engaging hundreds of clubites through schools across the island, the 4-H Club is grooming youngsters like Amanda to pursue agriculture as a viable career option. And she's a believer. Well, I would like to go to the University of the West Indies, UAE, and I would like to try to follow in the career of biotechnology and in veterinary service of Caprin. Caprin is the veterination of goats, as I said before, and I would like to do biotechnician. This is when you do, this is genetic engineering. Amanda's passion to care for animals started when she was much younger. She could be seen caring for her dogs when they were hurt. I used to have these medicines in the house that I would actually treat them with. Then Grandpa would say, no, no, let her treat them myself because he had the treatment for them. This young St. Anne resident and student of Fern Court High School is destined for great things in the future. But today, she's our teacher. Do you know how to select a goat? Well, I'll teach you about that. For us, you say a doe. A doe, you make sure that she's sturdy on the legs, just like that one over there. Stand, see the one standing on the stone? Sturdy on the legs, but you should have a wide barrel and a well-developed chest. And make sure that the udder is well attached, the big and tender and soft udders. 
so the goats can, so the kids can actually get some nice milk from it. In preparation for breeding, actually, you should um, expose the doors to fresh pastures, fresh green pastures, so you can get some lots of succulent plants. Then afterwards, you give it like one to two pounds of 12 to 16 percent CP, that is concentrated um, protein from the industries. Then you deworm and delose them and then you give them some vitamin supplements so they can be sturdy and well, well, very active so they can get to do what they want to do, you know what I mean. This natural talent comes also the comedic side to Amanda, which she uses to entertain her friends. <laughs> when I'm down like this, they make me smell like this. <laughs> but they said, you sure you don't want to do a thing? They said you could fit in here and I said, mm -mm -mm. There are three things that matter most to Amanda. I love school. And I love my best friends, really. And I enjoy working with animals very much. So much is that love for the care of animals that she was awarded the Jamaica 4-H Club Championship Trophy for Goat Care and Management at the 2014 National Expo. She is now the national representative in this category. With this knowledge and that which she will acquire in her future studies as a veterinarian, Amanda hopes to help her grandfather with his goats. And there are other plans. And I would like to apply to the Japanese Embassy for the scholarship that they're offering and then I would like to get a job over, over there and here if it's possible. Then I could actually um, promote the, production, the industry of goat production to, from Jamaica to Japan. And so in her spare time she reads manga, a Japanese comic that helps her to learn the language and the culture. Amanda's forward-thinking approach is one that's embraced by the government as it positions the agriculture sector for growth and sets up a promising future for the youth. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. In a pen, you should make sure that the feeders are designed in a way so to discourage the goats from stepping on the feeds or fecal contamination. And you should make sure that they, when they are going out to a pasture, I would recommend that the pasture have like grass length like this. I wouldn't like them to actually grow on the ground because you're actually risking the ghost to ingest worms and you wouldn't like that because this will formulate in a loss later on. The youths, positioning themselves to make a difference and continue the growth in agriculture. It's camera. Action! Get ready for Jamaica Film Festival 2015. From July 7 to 11, venues across the corporate area will be showcasing the historic, dramatic, comedic and animated sides of Jamaica. More than 300 minutes of showtime, some 15 films, four days of experiencing the talents of local actors, scriptwriters and directors. Gear up as international film investors invade the country to watch Jamaica. For more on Jamaica Film Festival 2015, contact Jamaica Promotions Corporation Jampro by phone or email. This is where we say so long, but please join us again tomorrow, same time, same station, for another insightful program. Until then, keep the link via our website, gis.gov.jm. We welcome your feedback, so keep sending your comments to Jamaica Magazine at gis.gov.jm or via tweet at GIS News. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Have yourselves a pleasant evening. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.